Sean, we see this issue all the time in lessons, and especially when we're using something like gears to really kind of put numbers to it. It's when golfers get to the top, there's a big disconnect. There's like, they have a lower body swing, they have a chest swing, then they have an arm swing, and those are rarely on the same page. Yeah, and they're, and they're trying to sequence those mentally coming out of the top in at 0.2 seconds. Right. Right? Yep, so we, we hear all the time, you know, syncing certain things up in the golf swing, but it's, it's a vague topic that in this video, we wanna kind of put some tangible numbers and concepts to, so you can have a better sync in your golf swing. So I think most golfers, if even if you've been playing for a day, realize that the arm swing and the body turns, right? When those things happen and how you kind of coordinate that movement is critical for the quality of your golf shots. Absolutely. So, you know, we've showed it before. The golf swing is a combination of a body pivot and this motion of the arms and how you blend those two together. That's that's the golf swing. Right. right? It's, it's the it's the Ferris wheel and mm -hmm. the merry go round. It's blending those two contraptions together. And that's what we have in the golf swing. Arms do a lot of lifting. Body does a lot of turning. And when those get off, when one is doing more of the job than the other, the golf swing doesn't feel great and the shots usually aren't great. Yeah, and I think the main thing that people think about when they think of sync is how do I get my arms synced up with my hips? Absolutely. And, that, and that's the topic, the focus of this video is how to get the feeling that the arm swing is synced up with the hip turn so that you don't feel so much disconnect in, uh, during the swing where it feels like um, the timing is off and the sequence is off. Right, we don't see very many uh, club golfers come in complaining about having too much shaft lean, too much compression, too low of a ball flight, right? We see a lot of uh, have ball flights too high and the shaft's actually leaning backwards, and that's an indication that your sequence is way off. Yeah, and I see it every day in lessons. Guys get up to the top of the swing and they think about firing the hips as hard and as fast as they can. Yep. Usually tips their body back and keeps their arms pinned to the body, and almost invariably, to get to the ball, they have to add this scooping action of the wrist. Yep. And as long as you keep firing the hips out and the arms aren't keeping up, right, that causes the scoop. That's absolutely one of the reasons, but there's even one that happens before that, and that's with yeah. you get to the top and you're still moving towards this back foot as you reach the top. So you're kind of in this classic 80-20, we'll call it, position in the right. Now you try to make a downswing and shift as you get the arms out. This has to move so little, mm -hmm. right, inches compared to feet, to that this sure. is always going to win the race and the arms are going to be left behind kind of just trying to hit the ball. Absolutely. And, and what Mike's saying there, instead of getting camped out on the right foot, uh -huh. we have to, when we talk about it all the time, I think we coined it, this recentering feeling, yep. right? Yep. If that recentering doesn't happen at the right time in the swing, it's impossible to sync up. Let's explain what that is for guys who are just seeing this for the first time or hearing that concept for the first time. Sure. So our concept of recentering is uh, as you make your move away from the ball, your club and your pressure is going to get as far away from the target as, it, as it's ever going to get kind of in this range right here with your arms. Yep. Club parallel to left arm parallel-ish, mm -hmm. right? So let's say you have a tiny bit of uh, mass movement to the right. Some don't, but let's just say we have a little bit of that. The recentering is from here to the top. The pressure and the, um, the mass moves back to where it started. It recenters to the middle of the stance. Let's go back to address. Yeah. So this is centered. Most yeah. golfers are going to be pretty equally distributed 50-50 between left and right. Right. You're going to recenter at the top. 50-50. Bam. Yep. Okay, what most people do, and what Mike said, is they get over here like this and load up. Now when they start to try to hit the ball and get their hips moving, right? Yeah. The arms are stuck back and they end up having to scoop, right? It's what the classic spin out. Left shoulder tilt really back. pops up, body tilts to lower the arms, all that. And if you spend a lot of time in front of a mirror working on your swing, working on your backswing, you're almost always gonna be training the static spot. Yeah, and that's, that's a great point. We also see guys trying to fix it, putting the lineman stick to the belt loops. Yeah. And you know, that might be helpful for some people, but it won't help if you're guilty of not recentering and then try to go, because you're never gonna be able to get your arms down in front of this shaft again. So the first thing that has to happen is the recentering. Mm -hmm. That's the critical part for syncing up your arms to your body. And let's kind of jump into a gear session here and we're gonna show you in, in detail of when this starts to happen. Right, we just kind of covered it there, but we're gonna show you in detail when it happens. Some of the best players in the world 
why it happens, and then how it starts to sync things up. And then we'll come back and show you some drills on how you can actually make that work in your golf swing. One of the cool things about gears is we can look at a golfer as we capture him, and the program puts lines through these major joints. So right here you can see we've got a toe line, a knee line, a hip line, shoulder line, and then our virtual spine, which puts a line straight down the body along the spine angle. And it really gives us easy references to see how they interact with one another as the golfer moves. And in this video, we're gonna focus on the shoulder line and that virtual spine. And we can rotate the golfer in any direction and we can actually look straight down these rods. As you can see here, we're looking straight down that shoulder rod, which connects both shoulders. Then we can move him at any point in the swing and do the same and look straight down that rod. This really lets us isolate certain segments of the body relative to each other. And we can also take something like this virtual spine, lock it at 90 degrees so we can really see the isolation of certain movements. And for this video, we're gonna focus on the upper right arm between the elbow and the shoulder and just take a look at how much that moves relative to the spine, that consistent 90 degree spine angle. So we can remove the distractions of any forward bending, any side bending, any rotation, and we're gonna see exactly how much or how little that right arm elevates and moves throughout the golf swing. And we're looking at two golfers here. We've got kind of a good range of movement here, very common range of movement, one on the high end, one on the low end. Both multiple winners out there. One of them's a PGA Tour champions golfer. One of them is a PGA Tour player. Both excellent golfers. One's a very long hitter. One's a very accurate hitter. So you're going to kind of see both ends of the spectrum here as we get going. And as we look at their address position here, again, we've got that vertical spine, that virtual spine, I should say, locked dead vertical at 90 degrees. So we can keep our point of view consistent. And we're looking dead down each of these golfers' shoulder lines. Right off the bat, we see that they have their arm elevated from that 90 degree spine. The bottom golfer is 35 degrees, the top golfer is 30 degrees, and the smaller angle that you see, that light blue angle, represents their elbow bend. So you can see 19 on the bottom, nine on top. Now we're looking at their left arm parallel, which we can't see the left arm, but it's left arm parallel, and you can see what the right arm has done as they've moved up in their swings to left arm parallel. Again, keeping our spine angle dead at 90. Now we can see the arm, how it's elevated. Both of their right arms have elevated 50 degrees on the bottom, 66 on top, and the corresponding elbow bends. Now here our guys are at the tops of their swing. We can see the arms have elevated, they've finished elevating 57 degrees, up from 35 degrees, so if my math's correct, that's 22 degrees of elevation on the bottom golfer with an elbow bend of right around 90 degrees, 87. And then our top golfer went from 30 degrees starting to 82. By my math, that's 52 degrees of elevation. So the longer hitter has much more arm elevation and a much wider elbow angle, which gives him a massive arc to generate some club head speed. And right, now we're looking at our guys at left arm parallel in the downswing. So we've looked at left arm parallel to the top, now to the top, down to left arm parallel in the downswing. And we can see a pretty substantial lowering of that right arm from 82 to 51 degrees at the top. And then we've got 57 to 41 down at the bottom. That's a pretty substantial lowering as this is gonna surprise a lot of golfers as the right elbow is losing bend, as the right arm is straightening. So what's interesting here is we have two golfers, again, one very accurate golfer, one very long golfer, and they have both lowered their right arm in the downswing, in the early downswing, in this first window of the downswing, two thirds of their lowering that right arm in the downswing happens in this top window, this top of the swing to left arm parallel. That's substantial lowering as the arm is straightening. So this isn't a passive movement. This, there's no way that we can say these golfers have left their arms up or they're passive with their arms. Two thirds of their arm movement happens in this window right out of the top of the swing here to left arm parallel. And again, we're removing, there's no bend, forward bend, causing these arms to come down. If all these golfers did was forward bend and left their arms up, these angles would not change from the top. 
we are seeing the isolated arm movements irrespective of their forward bend. We're taking all that away, all the tilts, all the bends, all the turns. You're looking at just the arm movements and you can see a substantial lowering from the top of the swing down here to left arm parallel. Then as we talked about while that's happening, our golfers are recentering and shifting forward. So there's two things at play here to get the body and arms in sync. And let's just look really quick here at our golfers, the same two golfers, same two swings, looking at them from address. And as we wheel them up to left arm parallel, we can see how both of them had shifted slightly off the ball, about an inch, inch and a half. The left arm parallel, almost identical. One and a half inches with the pelvis, one inch with the upper body. And as they move to the top, we can see how they've both recentered. So we got 0 0.5, 0 0.0, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, very much recentered at the tops of their swing. And then as we move them into left arm parallel on the downswing, and again, you can see how sharply we just saw the arms are coming down as they're shifting forward. What's important to note here is both their upper and lower bodies have shifted forward. This isn't a hip drive and an upper body dive to the right. This is both upper and lower body shift forward, four inches on the left, two inches on the right. And as we wheel them into impact, we can see where they wind up at. Everything is still forward of where it started. Hopefully seeing these numbers associated with these movements will start to tie in how the arm movements work and how those sync with the body movements. All right, Sean, we got two good drills here that are gonna really kind of, one, tie in this recentering move and then start talking about the sequencing. And sinking. Really training that up and letting you feel that, which is hugely important. So let's have you set up to it. Mm -hmm. And you can use this in front of a mirror or even better if you've got a live view camera or want a live view camera. We'll have a link down below this video. But we've got a live connection here from the camera, this little orange camera here that you're seeing to our iPad. And what we're gonna do is I'll do it while Sean's holding the club. I'm gonna draw a line. So let's have you set up. I'm gonna draw a line just down the dead middle of his body. Okay. Right? I'm just gonna recenter, just a center line down the net, okay. net dead middle of his so body. So right, right through here? Yep. Right down the dead, right up his zipper, right up through the middle of his head. Okay. This is gonna show you a couple things. One, you wanna keep your head and center pretty much in that same position as if you were just standing up. So we don't wanna start getting all cockeyed here at the setup. We wanna okay. be pretty neutral setup. Okay. Now you're gonna basically watch your line there on the uh -huh. screen. I want you back to the top somewhere around that recentered spot. So this would be the, the fault. Yep. So a little bit to the away from the target and then recenter at the top. Good. Okay? Good. So now we've got ourselves in, in good position there, right? I'm watching myself, making sure I'm recentered. The next key is how do I sync up the arms and the hips, right? So to do that, the next drill we like to add in, once you get recentered at the top, I want you to pump your arms down in front of your right leg here three times. One, two, and on the third one, I want you to clip the ball off the tee. From the recentered spot. From the recentered. Now here's here's a couple things that will throw all this off off uh, kilter out of whack. Let's go back up to our setup. Uh -huh. Now, if he shifts forward in the backswing, he's gonna have an issue. Absolutely. That's, you're not gonna be able to recenter from yeah, there. Yeah, that's that that's too far forward. And if I make any lateral motion, a lot of times that gets me more than that half. Or what a lot forward. of golfers will do, we're back into it. They'll reverse pivot. Yep. Okay. And so the idea is to not to stay centered, it's recenter. Allow yourself a little freedom of movement early and then back to the middle. That's gonna get a lot of uh, dynamic movement benefits later in the downswing. And like we said earlier in the video, it's impossible to sync things up when you're loaded on your back foot at the top of the swing. Let it recenter, and now your goal, instead of firing the hips out, it's gonna feel like you let your arms swing down in front of you, and by the time you get here, your hips should really only be back to square again. That's right. You shouldn't be 40 degrees open with your hands in front of your leg like a lot of you are trying to do. That's not synced up. Right. What you wanna feel is that your arms come down in front of this leg, and I had a, a teacher years ago that said, when the club gets down around kind of hitting zone, you wanna feel like your belt buckle and the butt of the club are together. So yep, you don't wanna snap that strength. The hips, do that again. Arms yeah. in front of the hands, mm -hmm. or hands in front of the leg. Mm -hmm. Hips are going to be slightly open like they are here. Mm -hmm. Shoulders are still going to be closed. Mm -hmm. We're not trying to have open shoulders here. Yeah, I think many of you are trying to do yeah. this. Get the arms down in front two or three times and the feeling through the ball, the butt of the club and the belt buckle working 
in sync. In sync. Instead of firing the hips and getting the arms and hips out of sync. Your old band. In sync. <laughs> All right, let's go back up to the top. Let's okay. go back to that recentered. <laughs> and this is the other thing that really kind of throws you out of whack. So let's go back to the top. And we do this a lot in lessons. I'm going to grab, I'm going to put my hand on his shoulder and his, and his, his left shoulder and his right shoulder and keep him from lowering the club with his shoulders. Yeah, so it needs to feel like your arms have some freedom to move. Right. Most of you guys are going to go, oop, oop, right. and try do to that move. all the time in lessons. So as the arms lower, allow my hips to square up, right? And now I can have this feeling of the linkage between the belt buckle and the butt of the club. And that's when you see that great club motion through here. The face is quiet and the club exits around to the left, just like everybody's trying to do. You can't do it from here, though. Mm -hmm. This guy a lot of times will go this way. So we have the numbers on gears the arms raise in the backswing, mm. right? That's some elevation to the arms. Pretty black and white. The arms come up in the backswing, they gotta come down in the downswing. Great point. We can't leave them up and rotate. Great okay? point. It throws it out of sequence. So we see this a lot. Go up here, and I'm keeping all this intact, and I'm just raising my shoulders or tilting my body to lower the arms. And that lowers the arms in the club, but that's not the way you wanna do it, because the shoulder gets up early. And now again, you're in such a bad spot that you have to manipulate the club with the wrist. That shifts your mass so far back behind the ball that it brings in all that green grass behind the ball into play, which is no fun. So again, that gives you some good ways to sync up the arms and the hips, which I think is one of the hallmarks of good players. Absolutely. Get yourself recentered at the top, get the arms dropping as you start to rotate, and you'll be well on your way to have that just beautiful synced up downswing, hands forward like they should be. If you enjoyed today's video, go ahead and give us a like, give us a thumbs up. Also, if you have a question about the video or there's a topic you want us to cover in a future video, leave it down in the comments below. We read every single comment and we respond to them and that's how we create new content for you in the future. Now, if you haven't already, go ahead and click the subscribe button so you know exactly when one of our new videos comes out. If you want more compression on your iron shots, more tour quality solid iron shots every time you go out to play, we created a free video just for you. In the pinned comment below, you're going to find a link. Click on the link, going to be taken to another page, you're going to enter your name and your email address. Once you do that, you're going to be taken instantly to the free video training where you're going to learn our number one go-to drill to get more compression on your iron shots, which is going to allow you to hit more greens and have more fun playing the game. Thank <laughs> you.